Standard Tibetan is the most widely spoken form of the Tibetic languages. It is based on the speech of Lhasa, and Yu Sang Central Tibetan dialect. For this reason, Standard Tibetan is often called Lhasa Tibetan. Tibetan is an official language of the Tibet Autonomous Region of the People's Republic of China. The written language is based on Classical Tibetan and is highly conservative. Registers Like many languages, Standard Tibetan has a variety of language registers Fal Skad – Demotic language – the vernacular speech J Sa – Polite respectful speech – the formal spoken style, particularly prominent in Lhasa Chose Skad – Religious or book language the literary style in which the scriptures and other classical works are written. Grammar Syntax and word order Tibetan is an ergative language. Grammatical constituents broadly have head final word order. Adjectives generally follow nouns in Tibetan, unless the two are linked by a genitive particle. Objects and adverbs precede the verb, as do adjectives in copular clauses. A noun marked with the genitive case precedes the noun which it modifies. Demonstratives and numerals follow the noun they modify. Topic. Numerals Unlike many other languages of East Asia and especially Chinese, another Sino-Tibetan language, there are no numeral auxiliaries or measure words used in counting in Tibetan although words expressive of a collective or integral are often used after the tens, sometimes after a smaller number. In scientific and astrological works, the numerals, as in Vedic Sanskrit, are expressed by symbolical words. <laughs> Writing system Tibetan is written with an Indic script, with a historically conservative orthography that reflects Old Tibetan phonology and helps unify the Tibetan language area. It is also helpful in reconstructing Proto-Sino-Tibetan and Old Chinese. Wiley transliteration is the most common system of romanization used by Western scholars in rendering written Tibetan using the Latin alphabet such as employed on much of this page. Tibetan pinyin, however, is the official romanization system employed by the government of the People's Republic of China. Certain names may also retain irregular transcriptions, such as Chomalunga for Mount Everest. Topic. Phonology of modern Lhasa Tibetan The following summarizes the sound system of the dialect of Tibetan spoken in Lhasa, the most influential variety of the spoken language. Topic. Vowels Turnadre and Sangda Dorje describe eight vowels in the standard language. Three additional vowels are sometimes described as significantly distinct. Or, which is normally an allophone of a, which is normally an allophone of o, and an unrounded, centralized, mid-front vowel, which is normally an allophone of e. These sounds normally occur in closed syllables, because Tibetan does not allow geminated consonants, there are cases in which one syllable ends with the same sound as the one following it. The result is that the first is pronounced as an open syllable but retains the vowel typical of a closed syllable. For instance, zob's foot is pronounced p and pad borrowing from Sanskrit padma, lotus is pronounced p, but the compound word, zob's pad is pronounced p. This process can result in minimal pairs involving sounds that are otherwise allophones. Sources vary on whether the phone resulting from e in a closed syllable and the phone resulting from a through the i mutation are distinct or basically identical. Phonemic vowel length exists in Lhasa Tibet but in a restricted set of circumstances. Assimilation of classical Tibetan suffixes, normally I at the end of a word produces a long vowel in Lhasa Tibetan, the feature is sometimes omitted in phonetic transcriptions. In normal spoken pronunciation, a lengthening of the vowel is also frequently substituted for the sounds r and l when they occur at the end of a syllable. The vowels i, y, e, o, and each have nasalized forms, i, y, e, o stroke, and, respectively, which historically results from, in, n, etc. In some unusual cases, the vowels, a, u, and, o, may also be nasalized. 
Topic: Tones. The Lhasa dialect is usually described as having two tones, high and low. However, in monosyllabic words, each tone can occur with two distinct contours. The high tone can be pronounced with either a flat or a falling contour, and the low tone can be pronounced with either a flat or rising falling contour, the latter being a tone that rises to a medium level before falling again. It is normally safe to distinguish only between the two tones because there are very few minimal pairs that differ only because of contour. The difference occurs only in certain words ending in the sounds m or, for instance, the word calm Tibetan peace is pronounced km with a high flat tone, whereas the word calms Tibetan the calm region is pronounced km with a high falling tone. In polysyllabic words, tone is not important except in the first syllable. This means that from the point of view of phonological typology, Tibetan could more accurately be described as a pitch accent language than a true tone language, in which all syllables in a word can carry their own tone. Topic. Consonants The unaspirated stops, p, t, c, and, k, typically become voiced in the low tone and are pronounced b, d, and, respectively. The sounds are regarded as allophones. Similarly, the aspirated stops p, t, c, and k are typically lightly aspirated in the low tone. The dialect of the upper social strata in Lhasa does not use voiced stops in the low tone. The alveolar trill r is in complementary distribution of the alveolar approximant, therefore, both are treated as one phoneme. The voiceless alveolar lateral approximant l resembles the voiceless alveolar lateral fricative found in languages such as Welsh and Zulu and is sometimes transcribed. The consonants per meter, p, r, l, and, k, may appear in syllable final positions. The classical Tibetan final, n, is still present, but its modern pronunciation is normally realized as a nasalization of the preceding vowel, rather than as a discrete consonant see above. However, k, is not pronounced in the final position of a word except in very formal speech. Also, syllable final, r, and, l, are often not clearly pronounced but realized as a lengthening of the preceding vowel. The phonemic glottal stop, appears only at the end of words in the place of, s, t, or, k, which were pronounced in classical Tibetan but have since been elided. For instance, the word for Tibet itself was bod in classical Tibetan but is now pronounced, p o stroke, in the Lhasa dialect. Topic. Verbal system. The standard Tibetan verbal system distinguishes four tenses and three evidential moods. The three moods may all occur with all three grammatical persons, though early descriptions associated the personal modal category with European first-person agreement. Topic. Counting system Standard Tibetan has a base 10 counting system. The basic units of the counting system of standard Tibetan is given in the table below in both the Tibetan script and a romanization for those unfamiliar with written Tibetan. Topic: <laughs> Scholarship. In the 18th and 19th centuries, several western linguists arrived in Tibet. The Capuchin friars who settled in Lhasa for a quarter of century from 1719, Francesco della Pena, well known from his accurate description of Tibet. Cassian di Maserata sent home materials which were used by the Augustine friar August. Antonio Giorgi of Rimini 1711 to 1797 in his Alphabetum Tibetanum Rome 1762 4T0, a ponderous and confused compilation which may be still referred to but with great caution. The Hungarian Sandor Korosi C. Soma (1784–1842), who published the first Tibetan European language dictionary, classical Tibetan and English in this case, and grammar essay towards a dictionary Tibetan and English. Heinrich August Jaschke of the Moravian Mission, which was established in Ladakh in 1857, Tibetan grammar and a Tibetan English dictionary. At St. Petersburg, Isaac Jacob Schmidt published his Grammatik der Tibetischen Sprache in 1839 and his Tibetisch Deutsches Wörterbuch in 1841. His access to Mongolian sources had enabled him to enrich the results of his labors with a certain amount of information unknown to his predecessors. 
His Tibetish Studien 1851 is a valuable collection of documents and observations. In France, P. E. Foucault published in 1847 a translation from the Rgyat Cher Rol Pa, the Tibetan version of the Lalita Vistara, and in 1858 a Grammaire Thibetain. Ant, Schiefner of St. Petersburg in 1849 his series of translations and researches. Theos Casimir Bernard, a Ph.D. scholar of religion from Columbia University, explorer and practitioner of yoga and Tibetan Buddhism, published, after his 1936–37 trip to India and Tibet, A Simplified Grammar of the Literary Tibetan Language, 1946. See the books section, Indian Indologist and linguist Rahul Sankradiyan wrote a Tibetan grammar in Hindi. Some of his other works on Tibetan were Tibati Bal Sicha, 1933 Pathavali, Vols. 1, 2, 3, 1933 Tibati Vyakaran, 1933 Tibat May Budh Dharm, 1948 Japanese linguist Kitamura Hajime published a grammar and dictionary of Lhasa Tibetan Contemporary usage In much of Tibet, primary education is conducted either primarily or entirely in the Tibetan language, and bilingual education is rarely introduced before students reach middle school. However, Chinese is the language of instruction of most Tibetan secondary schools. Students who continue on to tertiary education have the option of studying humanistic disciplines in Tibetan at a number of minority colleges in China. That contrasts with Tibetan schools in Dharamsala, India, where the Ministry of Human Resource Development curriculum requires academic subjects to be taught in English from middle school. Literacy and enrollment rates continue to be the main concern of the Chinese government. Much of the adult population in Tibet remains illiterate, and despite compulsory education policies, many parents in rural areas are unable to send their children to school. In February 2008, Norman Baker, a UK MP, released a statement to mark International Mother Language Day claiming, "...the Chinese government are following a deliberate policy of extinguishing all that is Tibetan, including their own language in their own country," and he asserted a right for Tibetans to express themselves, "...in their mother tongue." However, Tibetologist Elliot Sperling has noted that, Within certain limits the PRC does make efforts to accommodate Tibetan cultural expression." And the cultural activity taking place all over the Tibetan plateau cannot be ignored. Some scholars also question such claims because most Tibetans continue to reside in rural areas where Chinese is rarely spoken, as opposed to Lhasa and other Tibetan cities where Chinese can often be heard. In the Texas Journal of International Law, Barry Sotman stated that none of the many recent studies of endangered languages deems Tibetan to be imperiled, and language maintenance among Tibetans contrasts with language loss even in the remote areas of western states renowned for liberal policies, claims that primary schools in Tibet teach Mandarin are in error. Tibetan was the main language of instruction in 98% of Tar primary schools in 1996. Today, Mandarin is introduced in early grades only in urban schools. Because less than 4 out of 10 Tar Tibetans reach secondary school, primary school matters most for their cultural formation. The most important Tibetan branch of language under threat is, however, the Ladakhi language of the Western Tibetan group, in the Ladakh region of India. In Leh, a slow but gradual process is underway whereby the Tibetan vernacular is being supplanted by English and Hindi, and there are signs of a gradual loss of Tibetan cultural identity in the area. The adjacent Balti language is also in severe danger, and unlike Ladakhi, it has already been replaced by Urdu as the main language of Baltistan, particularly due to settlers speaking Urdu from other areas moving to that area. Topic see also Amdu Tibetan language comms Tibetan language languages of Bhutan Voice of America Tibetan language service topic references topic further reading Bernard Theos C 1946 A Simplified Grammar of the Literary Tibetan Language Santa Barbara California Tibetan Text Society Das Sarat Chandra 1902 Tibetan English Dictionary with Sanskrit synonyms Calcutta Bengal Secretariat Book Depot Reprinted by Mutalal Banarsidas, Delhi, ISBN 81-208-1713-3. Hodge, Stephen An Introduction to Classical Tibetan, Orchid Press, ISBN 974-524-039-7. 
Jashki, Heinrich August 2004, A Short Practical Grammar of the Tibetan Language, with special reference to the spoken dialects, London, Hardinge Simple, ISBN 1-84382-077-3. Contains a facsimile of the original publication in manuscript, the first printed version of 1883, and the later addenda published with the third edition, p. 4 of cover, first edition published in Kailang and Brit. Lahul by the author, in manuscript, in 1865. 1866. Romanized Tibetan and English Dictionary. Retrieved 30 June 2011, original from Oxford University, 1881. A Tibetan English Dictionary, with special reference to the prevailing dialects, to which is added an English Tibetan vocabulary. London, Unger Brothers, T. Grimm. 1883. Heinrich Wenzel, ed. Tibetan Grammar. Trubner's Collection of Simplified Grammars. 7 2nd ed. London, Trubner and Co. Cop, Teresa Kunkel, 1998. Verbalizers in Lhasa Tibetan. Ph.D. Dissertation, University of Texas at Arlington. Naga, Sangyi Tander, 2010. Some Reflections on the Mysterious Nature of Tibetan Language in, The Tibet Journal, Special Issue. Autumn 2009 Vol. 34 n. 3 Summer 2010 Vol. 35 n. 2. The Earth Ox Papers, edited by Roberto Vitali, pp. 561-566. Sandberg, Graham 1894. Handbook of Colloquial Tibetan, A Practical Guide to the Language of Central Tibet. Calcutta, Thacker, Spink & Co., original from Harvard University Tournadre, Nicholas, Dorje, Sangda 2003, Manual of Standard Tibetan, New York, Snow Lion Publications, ISBN 1-55939-189-8. Han, Michael. Foundational Questions of Tibetan Morphology. The Tibet Journal, Vol. 33, No. 2, 1 July 2008, pp. 3-19. Topic. External links Online keyboard for Tibetan